Recently added to Warframe are three types of Archon Shards, able to provide semi-permanent bonuses to your Warframes. This video will focus on the Crimson Shards, broadly labelled as the offensive ones. What are the options, how do they compare, and which frames could really benefit from them? I'm Nick Engineer, let's solve a practical problem. First, let's clarify about shards being semi-permanent. I call their bonuses semi-permanent as you can apply them to a Warframe for as long as you want with no upkeep. However, unlike something permanent, like applying an Oricon Reactor, you can remove the Archon Shard at any time for the cost of 50% bile. It's not a timed buff like Invigorations, not a consumable buff like Squad Restores, and it's not a conditional buff like Molt Augmented. You keep the buff until you choose to spend the resources to remove it unlocking that shard for a new use. So let's look at what options the Crimson Shard offers to you. The first three options are actually buffs to your weapons. Melee Critical Damage, Primary Status Chance and Secondary Critical Chance. These do exactly what they say on the tin and all of these bonuses apply additively with mods. For example, the plus 25% Melee Critical Damage bonus would be additive to Organ Shatter's plus 90%, giving you a total of plus 115% bonus using the mod and one shard. Broadly speaking, critical damage is harder to apply to a weapon than critical chance or status chance, making the melee critical damage buff the most impactful out of the weapon options. Of course, that's assuming you're using your melee to deal damage. It should go without saying, but if you're not using your melee, don't apply a melee shard. Likewise, if you're using your primary weapon for direct damage, or you're using your secondary weapon as a status primer, then applying the respective primary or secondary shard buff is similarly pointless. All three of these weapon options apply to Exalted Weaponry too. The melee critical damage buff will enhance the critical damage of Iron Staff, Exalted Blade, Valkyr Talons, Garuda Talons, Shadow Claws and Diwata. This also applies to Pseudo Exalteds which use your melee weapon as a stat stick, such as Korra's Whip Claw. Curiously enough, the critical damage bonus only applies to Korra's Whip Claw if you have a melee weapon equipped, even without mods. Without a melee, the Archon Shard will not buff Korra's critical damage. This isn't of any concern however, because there's no reason to use Whipclaw without a stat stick anyway. The secondary critical chance buff will apply to Hildren's Bellfire Charger, Mesa's Regulators and Titania's Dex Pixia, but the only exalted primary is Avara's Artemis Bow, making it the only one eligible for the status chance option. You'll need to weigh these boosts up against the other options your Archon Shards can bring you. Melee critical damage boost is likely to be pretty significant, as many current builds use either plus 90% or plus 150% in critical damage mods. Stacked with a huge amount of critical chance melee can access, this scales rather well. The other two weapon shard options though are just less useful. A critical secondary will often already be using critical delay for an instant 200% critical chance boost, which eclipses even a full set of Tau Forged Crimson Shards. While more crits does mean more damage, except on the late term, you can sometimes fare better with supporting a different part of your kit such as survivability, casting speed or particle velocity. So the secondary critical chance is kind of middle ground. As for primary status chance, a pair of 60-60 mods, an absolute basic inclusion into a status build, is almost as much status chance as you'd gain from 5 normal crimson shards. Considering that a high status build is usually supporting something else, be that your secondary, melee or abilities, plus status chance is an unlikely choice is the best benefit. The two biggest uses I can think of will be when using a damaging status build for even more harmful procs, or when using the Cedo and its ridiculous status application. Even then, the bonus from the shards is still additive to the mods you'll already be using on those weapons. Now overall, when it comes to the Crimson Shards, the far more interesting uses are the Warframe casting stats of plus duration and plus strength. These bonuses are once again additive to mods. If your strength is 200% and you add plus 10% to it, your strength is now 210%. A full suite of Crimson Shards will give you plus 50% in either stat, or eventually plus 75% when you have a set of Tau Forge Shards to throw around. For the normal Shards, that's almost equivalent to Prime Continuity or Transient Fortitude without the Duration debuff. Now I'm sure many of you will jump straight to the idea of maxing out these stats, whatever the maximum duration or maximum strength is these days. Between invigorations, reactant buffs and a pocket nidus, those maximums are very high. Everyone should try those at least once. But far more practical here is the effect these shards can have when you're not able to max out. 
On builds which reduce your duration, using fleeting expertise and transient fortitude, you'll find your options to recover that duration are both limited and not without drawbacks. Primed Continuity or Archon Continuity will boost your duration by 55%, but after that, your next mod options are the Low Impact of Augur Message at 24%, Constitution at 28% despite having almost the same drain as Prime Continuity, or Nira's Hatred with a tiny plus 15%. Alternatively, you could look at Narrow Minded, which has a huge 99% boost, but this comes at the exchange of both a high drain and minus 66% range. With the Archon shards instead, 5 normal shards will give almost the same boost to duration as Augur Message and Constitution combined, in the process saving you 2 mod slots and 20 base mod capacity. Just think about how much more you can do with 2 extra mod slots on any build. A couple Townforge Crimson Shards can fully replace Constitution's duration bonus, and this frees up a mod slot for you to use on something you might not normally consider, such as a Gladiator mod. That one mod in itself would give you up to 110% extra melee critical chance, on top of the mod's main bonus. So while you may not notice an extra 5 seconds on an already long duration for Raw, you will notice having a whole extra mod slot to use. Now as for Strength Shards, saving the best for last, this is where we get to talk about breakpoints. A breakpoint in gaming is where an invisible threshold marks a significant change in effectiveness, either unlocking a new tier of capability, or marking a point where any extra boost has no further benefit. For many things in Warframe, there aren't any serious breakpoints. While having 10,000 damage will be a breakpoint in terms of one-shotting an enemy with 10,000 health, we face so many enemies across so many levels that no specific value matters. The same is true for status chance, critical chance, attack speed, and so on. However, ability strength does lead to some breakpoints and builds which you can make use of. An obvious starting point is in armor reduction abilities. Stylax's armor reduction from Tharos Strike reaches its max potential at 200% ability strength. If you equip Blind Range, you'll have 199% strength, which will still leave a tiny fraction of the enemy armor intact. Sometimes that's acceptable. Other times, you need the armor to hit zero. Without Archon Shards, this would mean spending a whole extra mod slot on that 1% more strength. Instead, one Crimson Shard saves you that mod slot and still allows you to hit that 200% strength breakpoint. One shard for one mod slot is an incredible trade off. Applying this same process across your Warframes and builds, you'll find plenty of these breakpoints where you either reach the limit you can get from strength or reduce the number of casts you need to get the desired result. Let's look at some more examples. On Frost, Avalanche is another armor removal ability. If you're in a pre-made squad, with everyone bringing corrosive projection, enemies already have their armor reduced by 72%. At this point, you only need 28% armor removal to strip them to nothing in one cast. However, putting Overextended on Frost reduces his armor removal to just 24%. Having done that, you either must spend another mod slot to reach 28%, or a single Crimson Shard can make up that difference. This also applies defensively. If you're using Equinox and Blind Rage, Transient Fortitude and Power Drift, this will give you 269% strength. Using the Mend ability, this will give you 67.25 shields per kill, which is not quite enough to fully restore Equinox's shields when using a Decaying Dragon Key. Even throwing on Intensify wouldn't get you the whole way to that needed 300%, but with 4 Crimson Shards, or 3 shards if at least one is Talforged, you can reach that 300% strength breakpoint. Mend will now restore at least 75 shields with every single kill, fully restoring your shield and thus restoring your shield gate for defense purposes. Looking to other frames, Gara's breakpoint for defense is 129% strength, maxing out her Splinter Storm. Likewise, Mace's breakpoint is 119% strength for Shatter Shield, although pretty much every Mesa build wants more strength than that already. Necros's breakpoint for damage reduction when using Shield of Shadows is 215%. With Nyx, her Psychic Bolts have a breakpoint of 125% for maximum defense reduction, which you can do with Power Drift in the Exla slot and one Crimson Shard, leaving all 8 normal mod slots available for everything else. Again and again these breakpoints pop up, and being able to reach them using Archon Shards allows you to optimize the rest of your Warframe with your other preferred mods. So yes, you can use Strength Shards beyond just Breakpoints. You can boost the effectiveness of Raw, Gloom, or any other Strength-based ability you're making use of. But overall, I'd say it's modding around Breakpoints, which makes Plus Strength 
the most build changing option on the Crimson Shards. Just one or two shards can save your mod slot or remove a corrupted mod's debuff. So the question is then, where are you choosing to use your Crimson Shards? I'm genuinely curious how many players are actually using them for primary status chance. Let me know in the comments if that includes you. In any case, I hope this guide has given you some more ideas on how to make use of your Crimson Shards. That's all from me for now though, so as always, apply shards, break limits, and fight well, Tano.